Let's review everything we've talked about in mastering the bent over row. So the first thing we mentioned was you need to master the RDL because if I can't stabilize myself, if I can't load my lower body muscles without feeling my low back muscles, then I can't even set up for the row. You need to be able to do the, at least the eccentric and the isometric hold at the bottom of a hip hinge or of a uh, bent over um, deadlift or of a stiff legged deadlift or of a Romanian deadlift as I normally call them. Um, and I need to be able to secure myself with the glute and with the hamstring. I need to feel that in my butt holding me up if I'm going to get anything out of this row. Otherwise, all I'm going to do is I'm going to feel it in my back. I'm not going to be able to do it forever. Um, and, and my ceiling of potential is going to be lower and lower and lower. Next, we talked about not only doing the Romanian deadlift, but we also have to worry about the upper half. We have to learn how to do a row. We have to learn how to lead a row with our shoulder blades coming backward, retracting, and then letting our elbows follow to get that nice little squeeze finish at the very, very end. This just keeps your shoulders healthy for longer. It keeps the shoulder joint in the position that will allow the or it keeps the, the shoulder blade in the position that allows the shoulder joint to move maximally. And so if I'm doing a row, I need to make sure, prioritize that I'm feeling that upper back, not just because that's what the row is for, it's for the lat too a little bit, but if I'm only getting lat and I'm not getting upper back, then I know that I'm wearing away my shoulder more than I have to. I'm not keeping the joint quite as congruent, quite as uh, I'm not dispersing the surface area over the broadest or dispersing the force over the broadest surface area that I possibly could. Number three, we talked about after or during, well, after really, after I've learned the Romanian deadlift and after I've learned how to row both arms back with my shoulders. Um, again, I like the seated cable row for that variation. After we've done all that and we're ready to try the bent over row, with a barbell, the next tip, the third tip is to select an appropriate weight. Check your ego at the door. It's not about lifting as much weight as possible. It's about making good technique early on and as often as possible so that I train the strength that will keep my longevity. It will keep my body together as long as possible. It will keep my mobility as long as possible. So I don't walk around like a penguin, right? And I'll stiff it, stiff like. You might still get some of that, but <laughs> that's that just means you're training hard, right? After you've selected an appropriate weight, make sure you're setting your RDL correctly. You're feeling it in your butt, in your hamstrings, your heels are firm in the ground. And then as you start to row up, you need the force to come through the ground, through your feet, through your butt, up your torso, and then into the barbell. And so what we need to do is kind of think about initiating through the feet and driving the hips forward just ever so slightly that I, I even like to see people move just tiny bits, especially if they're having trouble with this, if they're feeling it a lot in their low back. If I start to emphasize that hip motion, then I know I'm stabilizing and getting the the movement with the right muscles. After that, after we've learned the hip drive to kind of take the next step, we need to know that when we row up, our weight is shifting. The, our center of mass is now comprised of our body and the barbell. And as the barbell raises, so does our center of mass. And it starts to move kind of forward and backward a little bit even uh, because of how it's shifting. And hopefully it's not moving side to side that much. Uh, but in doing that, we need to be able to compensate with our own little uh, body weight shift. That's the only way to keep your balance while you're doing the row. After that, big mistake that people make that I see all the time because I'm looking in the mirror is this crunch to stabilize. You don't want to let everything crunch down. You don't want to let your mid back bend to stabilize you so much. You want that stabilization to occur from all sides and just kind of, you know, cinch itself 
in together and that gives you the uh, stability, the pressure that you need to do this lift. <clears throat> so instead of um, letting your arm stretch that extra little bit and getting too much of a crunch, and instead of um, stabilizing yourself with a sunken chest, what I'm looking for is to be really tall from the heels all the way up through the spine. And that leads us into our last point, which is that the spine is also the, the head and neck. I need to keep thinking about that tallness, right? I don't wanna tilt my head back too far, and I don't wanna straighten it out, flatten it out, tuck my chin too far. Those are, those are muscles that are necessary for stabilizing your body, but if I'm going to keep the mobility that I need, if I'm going to activate the upper back muscles that I need during the bent over row, I'm gonna to need to keep a little bit of fluidity in my body as it's stabilized. And so if I just think about keeping my spine nice and long and tall like you got a string at the top of your head and someone above you is pulling it up that's all I want to keep to make sure that I can keep the spinal position that will allow me to do the best row possible and I think that if you take all of that advice you master your RDL your row you don't pick too much weight you drive with your hips you shift your weight a little bit and you keep your spine nice and set neutral then I think you will master the bent over row